they're playing basketball. Uh, all around the we world. Got basketball. Uh, to the beach, y'all. Let's go. Uh, all around the we world. Y'all know. This is so, so dead. Hi guys, and welcome to the first episode of The King's Court. My name is Kabir Alwali, and this is my brother Kermit. Just a quick overview about our show is, uh, me and Kabir, we grew up with a very intense passion for the sport of basketball. We started playing the sport when we were about six years old, and over time, as we grew up, we began watching, we began watching every game in the NBA as much as we could. You know, on school nights, we, we were watching preseason games, regular season games, all-star games, playoff games, finals games. And along the path, we, we developed a great interest in not only the league, but also the players and everything that surrounds them, all the news especially. So along with all, along with all of that, uh, we decided to just uh, create a show where we would just express our opinions about what we think about the NBA right now and all the news happening at this moment. You know, the cool thing about the Kings Court is that it's not only about basketball. There, recently, there's been a huge influx of people who are really interested in Jordan shoes, Nike shoes, Adidas shoes, Reebok shoes, whatever. But basically, shoes have, are a lifestyle now when you're a basketball fan. When you're a basketball fan, you're a shoe fan. So because of that, us also being really big shoe fans, we have decided to fuse the two aspects of basketball, both the sport itself and the culture of it, such as shoes, um, by talking about shoes in our show. So we will have a weekly thing called the Sneak of the Week, which in this show, today's show, it will be right here at the Concord 11s, which you can't progress a show without starting with one of the best Jordans of all time. So those are the Concord 11s, and then in other videos, we'll hit you with some reviews, and then at the end of this video, I'll show you, I'll give you a heads up on some of the upcoming releases that will be coming out in coming weeks. I would like to introduce some of the topics that we would dis that we were about to discuss. Um, we can't progress in the show without saying, without, we can't talk about some of last week's news. We kind of have to talk about a general overview of the whole off season, just because it's our first show. So we will be discussing Kevin Love and LeBron James going to Cleveland and how that will affect the league and the Cavs. And then we will also give our predictions on the next year's finals champions, the most valuable player, and the rookie of the year. So the first topic I mentioned was LeBron James' return to Cleveland and Kevin Love deciding to join him in Cleveland. So Cameron, I was just going to ask you, what do you think this ha what kind of an impact does this have on not only the Cavs, but the league as a whole? You know, the, the LeBron James returning to Cleveland is a great story by itself, and also, uh, it has a huge impact on the Cavs, definitely, but also the entire Eastern Conference. It reshapes the entire structure of that of that part of the league. You know, the Cavs are thought to be back at the top, even only with LeBron, uh, with only the Bulls really being able to contend with them. But uh, the Heat obviously dropped down a couple of couple of spots in the playoff run, and now you also add Kevin Love, who's uh, arguably one of the best power forwards in the league, with only Blake Griffin as as anyone who can uh, challenge that spot from him. But uh, Kevin Love brings a unique set of skills to the Cavaliers. He can shoot the three ball, which is a very important, which is a very important skill to have in a uh, new coach, David Blatt's offense. Uh, also, LeBron James will be able to find him very quickly. They also added new pieces in Mike Miller and James Jones, who can spread the floor for LeBron. And LeBron has a bunch of toys that he can play with, the, with uh, Kyrie Irving. Uh, Kyrie Irving can easily create his own shots, and he can be that clutch player that many think LeBron uh, many think, many people think that that part of LeBron's game is missing, but Kyrie Irving could fill that void. And also Dion Waiters, who uh, I've read uh, could, has the potential to be the new age Vinnie Johnson, who if you remember was on the Bad Boy Pistons, and he had a tendency to heat up, therefore he earned the nickname the microwave because he would just go on spurts of scoring, and, and yeah, I think the Cavs are in great shape. You know, for me, I think that this, these acquisitions for the Cavs aren't really big for the whole league, but just for the Eastern Conference. Because the Eastern Conference, as we all know, is so weak. Um, especially with Paul George out with injury, and just a bunch of people leaving to go to the Western Conference, the much more competitive Western Conference. So, I think that the Cavs are now a sure lock to be in the finals representing the East Coast, and I think that 
Um, for the Bulls, I think that they're the only people who can actually challenge them, like you said. And um, the I'd say that in the Western Conference, it's kind of tough to decide who will go to the finals just because there's so much competition. So as far as how much it impacts the league, I'll say not really the Western Conference because it's already so competitive, but just the Eastern Conference, it makes the Cavs a lot. Next up, we have the predictions for the MVP. So I'm gonna ask you, who's your prediction for next year's MVP? Personally, I think uh, at this point, I see LeBron James winning the MVP this upcoming season. Uh, because uh, I read Bill Simmons' article whenever LeBron made the choice to uh, to come back to Cleveland and he was just explaining how much comfort LeBron is going to have in this setting back in his hometown he has a reason, to, he has a reason to, to win he wants to bring a championship back to his hometown which they have, ne which they have never accomplished and uh, now he has the pieces to be able to do it so not only is he in a comfortable environment with his family and his kids all, all back in Cleveland with him but he also has the right pieces around him to to contend to contend for many years. So I think at this point it'll be LeBron. I think you'll see a a high, a very high rise in his uh, assists because he'll have so many options to pass to Kevin Love, Dion Waiters, and Kyrie Irving. I think his rebounding numbers may dip, but that's not that's not a particular strong point of his game. Like he can get rebounds, but Kevin Love and Anderson Vergeau are gonna get mo grab most of the boards for the Cavaliers at this point. And uh, I think his scoring will. I think scoring will about about probably stay the same, uh, around 27 points a game. And the final two choices would be when the season comes to an end or when the playoffs come around would be Kevin Durant and LeBron James. I think LeBron James would get the edge would get the edge this year. You know I gotta agree with you. LeBron is obviously the best player on the planet, and you can't touch LeBron if you want to be successful in the NBA. LeBron is LeBron is the goal that everyone wants to be. But if I had to choose someone to challenge him, it would be last year's MVP, the second best player in the NBA, Kevin Durant. Um, the Thunder are still, they're a good team, but they lack a lot of extra scoring outside of Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and Serge Ibaka. So I just think that Durant will continue his stride of averaging 30 points a game, lighting up the scoreboard, and I think he's becoming a really good all-around player. And I just think that maybe he could repeat just like LeBron for an MVP. But if I had to, if I had to be safe, I would choose LeBron as next year's MVP, just because, just because he's so comfortable in his new home of Cleveland. He has so many weapons around him to make it easier for him. Yet he can also be effective still. So I just think that for LeBron, it's a really easy trip for him to win the reclaim his crown as the MVP. So next up, we have the finals. Who do you think is going to represent the East and the West in 2015 NBA Finals? And who do you think is going to win? I think when all is said and done in the playoffs, and there's always the last two teams standing, I think those two teams will end up being the Cleveland Cavaliers and the, and I think it will be the OKC Thunder, actually. I think this year will be the year that the Oklahoma City Thunder get over that hump and that San Antonio Spurs team that has, that has blocked them from their trip to the finals. Uh, consecutive years ever since uh, they they went to the finals in 2012, but I think I think this is the year where Kevin Durant really shows all that he can do in his arsenal. Uh, he showed it he showed it before his scoring punch. He he averaged a little bit over 30 points a game last season. But I think this year you'll see more of him distributing as well as rebounding and doing all the little things that will help his team win. Also, with uh, a healthy Russell Westbrook back, Westbrook Westbrook wasn't with the team at the beginning of the season. So I think uh, with him back, the Thunder will jump out to a hot start. They'll get, they'll have a great record. They might even, they might even win the best seed in the East, in the West. But uh, I think they'll face the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think the matchup will be tremendous with Kyrie Irving uh, faced up on Russell Westbrook, LeBron on Durant, and Love on Serge Ibaka. It's the offense, defense kind of, kind of mix up. But. Uh, I think that series will be truly one for the ages if it happens, which I think it will happen. And when all is said and done, I think the Cavs will come out on top and, and LeBron will win the finals MVP. You know, as much as I said that the Cavs would be a clear cut to go to the championship next year, I gotta think that a team like the Bulls would give them a really big run for their money and in my opinion, I think the Bulls will surpass the Cavs in the playoffs and be representing the Eastern Conference in the finals. I just think that their pickup of Pau Gasol was impeccable, 
I think he fits really good into the system. They have a lot of good big men, and he just adds to their depth. And they lost Carlos Boozer, and Pau Gasol was more than making up for that. And then with the Derrick Rose is looking great in the USA camp, so um, just Derrick Rose, a healthy Derrick Rose back could be lethal, especially for the Cavs, who have so much inexperience, playoff inexperience on their team with Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving never have been to the postseason. So maybe LeBron, who knows, maybe LeBron can carry them on their shoulders, will them through, take them to the finals, but I just don't see it. I think this is the Bulls year to go back to the finals since the Jordan era. And I, I think that they will be representing the Eastern Conference. But for the Western Conference, it's hard. It's hard every year, but I got to go with the Thunder, just like you said. Um, the Spurs, the Spurs didn't really make, didn't really go out and make any huge pickups, which isn't bad because they have a really good team already. But I just think every single year, the Thunder get more and more and more hungry and Russell Westbrook is going to be fully healthy. Serge Ibaka was also injured last year for a little bit, last year in the postseason for a little bit. So that could help them out. And then they got Anthony Morrow, who is bound to help them be a good role player in their system. So I just see the Thunder playing the Bulls in the finals next year. And if I had to pick a winner, I think I'd go with the Bulls. Like, yeah, that, that would probably be my opinion. I just think that Derrick Rose will have a couple, the series of his life just go off. I think Joe Kim Noah, Pau Gasol, Todd Gibbs, all of them will just be outstanding. And I think that the Bulls will bring back a championship to Chicago. So our final topic that relates to the NBA is going to be your prediction, what I think of your prediction for the rookies of the year. Obviously, a lot of good rookies this year, really good draft class. So who do you think is going to be next year's rookie of the year? As of now, I think the rookie of the year, my early pick would be Jabari Parker from Duke. Uh, he got drafted number two overall with the Milwaukee Bucks and I think on a team, on the Bucks team, they have such a lack of talent. None of their players can stay, none of their good players can stay on the court for an extended amount of time, especially Larry Sanders has off-court troubles, their defensive center, uh, and he, he's also been injured quite a lot. They have Brandon Knight who I think he'll be pretty solid this year. But Jabari Parker will do much of the heavy lifting for this team this year. And I think potentially you could see him average uh, maybe 20, at least 20 points a game. And uh, I think that's a tremendous feat for a rookie. And uh, at this point, I see Andrew Wiggins as the only player to contend for the Rookie of the Year. But Andrew Wiggins just got traded to Minnesota. And Minnesota already has a bunch of established players such as Kevin Martin and Ricky Rubio. and. Uh, they just got Thaddeus Young, as well as Nikola Pekovic. So all those veterans are already on the team. And I don't know, Andrew Wiggins will just have to work for his points. And although he, he is the future of the team, I don't think that year is now. You know, as much as I respect and admire your pick, I gotta go with Andrew Wiggins. Because if not, if one thing that we know about the NBA, it's that people like highlights, people like dunks. And that's what Andrew Wiggins will provide on his new team in the Minnesota Timberwolves. Not only that, but he can also defend, he can shoot the basketball, he's athletic, he's an all-around player, he's really good. So I think that just because Ricky Rubio is there in the system with him, it'll make for a really exciting Timberwolves team, cool little dunks, Andrew Wiggins, Glenn Robinson, Zach Levine, and I think that this whole athletic, athletic moniker will be given to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and their games will be exciting just off of sheer hype. So I think that with that, with hype will come attention. With attention, I think Andrew Wiggins will get the Rookie of the Year. And let's not act like dunking is the only thing that he'll do. Like he can also he can also score. Like I said, he's just he's a really good all-around player. And he was the first pick in the draft for a reason. And so I just think that Wiggins is going to be a good pick. But Jabari Parker is very threatening, obviously. And that but if I also had to pick a uh, sleeper pick. I think I would go with Alfred Payton of the Orlando Magic or maybe Aaron Gordon also of the Orlando Magic to maybe challenge Wiggins, but if I had to pick a clear option, it would be Wiggins. So now we'll introduce the sneak of the week. And like I said before, this show is also focused not only on shoes, but also, or not only on basketball rather, but also on shoes. So this, this week's sneak of the week is the Concord 11s. So this is a shoe. Obviously, this is one of the best shoes Jordan has ever created. One of the most, one of the most valuable, not only not in price, but just in 
having the shoe, people value this shoe more than they value their their other shoes. So this shoe is just it's higher it's a pioneer shoe. So as you can see, it has the normal Jordan logo common on every single pair of the Elevens, and then it has the leather going around the Jordan logo and going around the shoe, and then it has this mesh type upper right here along with the along with the lines that separate um, each individual part of the shoe and then if I go to the front of the shoe it has the um, it has the black tab or it has the back black toe sorry and um, this is consistent throughout the whole shoe throughout the mid and back right here in the tab and um, so obviously the shoe is really basic but it's just quality shoe um, here to see it again you can see the soles also obviously I've worn them a little and they're a little bit they're a little bit um, they're older so usually they'd have the ice blue soles but since I've worn them a little you can kind of see the yellowing going on and you have the Concord pods right here and then not to mention the 23 right here on the back so this is just an outstanding shoe for anybody Everybody who is into sneakers should have a pair of Concord just because you cannot collect shoes without completing it with a pair of Concord. So uh, my brother here, he's he's a little bit more analytical when it comes to shoes. He likes to look at the material and the design. But for me, I use I, I like to look at the appearance and how, how wearable it is. So basically I think this shoe is really one of a kind because uh it's so it's very wearable. The colors are standard, they look they look normal, they're just white and black. You can pretty much wear those colors with pretty much everything and and they're not the the colors usually when people think of white and black they think of oh it's kinda boring, but it's the exact opposite when it comes to these shoes. These shoes really stand out and they they bring a little flavor to your uh, to your personality whenever you wear them. They're very they're very noticeable and you they're very respectable shoes. As as of comfort. Uh, they're very comfortable as well. Uh, you can play basketball in them, but I don't know many people who actually do. And so basically, yeah, they're a great all-around shoe that would pretty much look good with everything. So probably the most anticipated hype release, probably of the uh, fall and summer, winter, whatever, will be the What The LeBrons. They release on September 13th for a retail price of $250. And these are a beautiful shoe, obviously. Every single What Does, KDs, Kobe's, LeBrons, Dunks, Whatever what does, they all are beautiful shoes, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna get some. So guys, that's it for today's show. Be sure to follow us on follow us on Twitter. Check out our website at kingscourtshow.com, and uh, check out our next video next Saturday. And also, don't forget to leave feedback in the comments below. And above all, be sure to join us next Saturday. Thank you so much for joining us. See you later. To the rack and I'm dunking on them like C Mac. When I'm in the plan, I play with that Ronzo style. I'm like Darius, cause I can show Don't too many players get offers like me. Uh -huh. Back and forth, I likely shake the checks off your Nikes. Okay. They almost had me in a suit at the draft, cause it looked like a free throw when I be shooting from half. The first step, like Iverson, blow past you. Usually nothing but net, but I could go blast too. When I'm in the paint, the defense.